love that one. Did you see how high it went? And I felt like it left my stomach up there when we started down. And the way it went around the corner, that was so cool. Mm. I don't think I want to go on that one again. You don't? Oh, come on, it was uh, fun. Now listen, everybody's different. Not everybody likes the same kind of rides. I don't think I want to go on it again either. Hey, gang, <laughs> let's just stop and figure out where we want to go next. How about the thrill? That's another coaster, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I want to go on one of these exhibit-type rides. Like what? Food of the future? Uh, 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 hi. hi. No, it's about airbags. It's a uh, virtual reality type ride. It's called Airbags Today and Tomorrow. Cool. Do you get to roll to the left and roll to the right and crash on it? No, you don't do that. You learn about airbags. Yeah, I think that could actually be pretty interesting. You know, it's probably technology and stuff and yeah. computers and... <laughs> and plus, I really need a break from these other rides. Okay. Good. Try it over here. <laughs> My seat is better. Better than what? <laughs> Pretty exciting, this airbag stuff. Like wind speeds of 200 miles per hour, there are great forces involved when an airbag deploys. My name is Delta V. Delta V? That's a weird name. There are great forces involved in the deployment of an airbag. Welcome to Airbags Today and Tomorrow. We're going to show you how an airbag works and how you can best take advantage of its life-saving benefits. Airbags are designed to deploy when the safety system in your car determines that an airbag might reduce serious injury in a crash. It's not designed to deploy in minor crashes, only those that are considered moderate to severe. And here's how it works. Your airbag is basically a system of three parts. The diagnostic unit, which is usually located under the hood, the crash sensors, which may be located in several places, and the airbag module itself, which can be found in the steering wheel and in the instrument panel. Your car may also have side impact or even rollover airbags that may be located in the door, along the roof above the door, or in the edge of the seat back. In a moderate to severe crash, the sensors send a signal to an inflator inside the airbag. An igniter starts a chemical reaction, which produces harmless gases, which fill the airbag, causing it to deploy. Oh! Dad, how does the car know what kind of crash it is? A not so bad one or a real bad one? I mean, cars can't think. Delta V here. I'm the reason your car knows to deploy an airbag. Hopefully, you'll never meet me in a real crash. Delta is the Greek letter that means change. And V is the symbol for velocity or speed. <laughs> In a crash, your car's change in velocity depends on what you hit and how you hit it. Look, Mom. For example, let's say I'm driving along and I hit a parked car. Now, it may not seem like it to you, but I slow down gradually because the thing I hit moves. But let's say I'm driving around and I hit a concrete barrier head-on. I slow down pretty quick. Concrete doesn't move. See what I mean? Actually, delta V is a physics concept. Dad, is physics the one you said you got a C in? Shh. But what you hit isn't the only thing that affects the change in velocity. It's also how you hit it. An airbag is designed to deploy in a crash comparable to hitting something unmovable, like a brick wall head on, when you're going at least 8 to 14 miles an hour. But all crashes are different. If you hit the brick wall off-center, or if you hit a pole, you'd have to be going faster for your airbag to deploy. That's because the crush of the car is concentrated in one area, causing you to slow down more gradually. And if you hit something that's movable and crushable, you'd have to be traveling at an even higher speed before your airbag would deploy. An airbag won't deploy in every crash. That's one reason you need to wear a safety belt but not the only reason. Ready? 
Hold on. We're not gonna crash again, are we? There's a reason airbags are called supplemental restraint systems. They don't work in all types of crashes. Front airbags don't work if your car is hit from the side. Or if your car is hit from behind. And about a third of all crashes are from behind. And they don't work if the car rolls over. No rolling, no rolling. A front airbag won't work in any of those situations. And secondly, an airbag only deploys once. A lot of crashes involve a car that hits one car and then another car. The airbag only works in the first crash. It can't deploy again in the second. Only safety belts reduce your risk of injury in all types of crashes. Power. Power. There's yet a third reason you need to always wear a safety belt, and it's just as important, if not more important, than the other two. It's because of the power and the force. <laughs> Airbags deploy with great force, faster than the blink of an eye. This force is what makes them work. If you come into contact with a deploying airbag because you're not buckled up or positioned correctly in your seat, you could become seriously injured or even killed in a crash. Oh, look at, look at, watch me, look at me. Are you watching? Can you see me? Look closely. I'm sitting properly. Remember to sit upright against the seat and push the seat back as far as you possibly can and still operate all the controls. There should be at least 10 inches between your breastbone and the center of the steering wheel. And that's about the size of a standard piece of paper. The lap belt should be worn low and snug across the hips. The shoulder belt should be worn across the chest. Now, when the car is moving, front seat passengers should not lean forward, putting their heads close to the instrument panel to, for example, pick something up from the floor. Or in a car with a passenger side airbag, don't put your hands